or in the daytime either. I just lay there and couldn't do anything. In that block of flats? Yes. Tell me more. How has it changed your life? Oh, my husband is here. Should I turn off the camera? Yes, put it away. We're friends of Fariba's. We live out of the country. I told you I have a friend who's a filmmaker, who visited me before. I've been calling home since 10. We left the house at 10. I called at 11 too, and then I came home but you weren't here. You have to tell me when you leave. I had to pick up Mehran from Mums. You could at least call so I don't worry. So you're at your mom's? I have nowhere else to go. Why didn't you call? I couldn't. I was upset when you weren't home. I was worried. What time are you coming tonight? I'll come during the day. Goodbye. Goodbye. I don't dare go out alone. He phones a hundred times a day to check up on me. Put these on. Oh, aren't you cute? Now try these on. I think he only wants me for sex, just for his own gratification. Here in this house, I'm like his doll. But I have to accept it and keep my mouth shut. All I want from God is a good future for my son. My greatest wish is to someday get my daughter back. Fariba told me that Mina has given her daughter to her grandmother. She's moved to another town to try to find happiness. I'm leaving Iran to go back to Sweden. Mina and Fariba can't do that. Like millions of other women, they must live in a country that legislates the oppression of women. And where drugs and prostitution go hand in hand with hypocrisy. The Passionate Eye presents Being Osama. How you anyone named Osama? Osama uh, Bin Laden. Six Montrealers tell us what it's like to share a name with the world's most wanted man. My name was stolen from me. I didn't like that at all. September 11th gave them the opportunity to be able to hate somebody um, officially. As they open a window on Canada's Arab community post 9-11.
Perfect. That's Being Osama next week on The Passionate Eye.